Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. This is a compilation video of some of my greatest hits. Hope y'all enjoy them. A natural phenomena called the Golden Ratio. The Golden Ratio was first described in Euclid's Elements 2300 years ago. So this is, this is not a new thing. This is an old thing. And this guy, Euclid, he dealt a lot with uh, alchemy and things of that nature. And so it's, 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 I'm not going to say it's questionable, but it bears more investigation. Golden Ratio is a mathematical phenomena found all over the world in nature and art and architecture. Now that people are aware of it, it's also being used in physics and technology. It's also called Phi, P-H-I, as opposed to Pi. This is Phi, P-H-I. And it's uh, indicated by the symbol of a circle with an I, a capital I through it. Um, basically, the golden ratio is 1 to 1.6. And it is illustrated mathematically by the Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci sequence. Uh, it, this is a formula um, where you take the sum plus the last number and gives you the next sum. So 0 plus 1 equals 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 plus 2 equals 3. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 3 plus 5 equals 8. 5 plus 8 equals 13. And you can keep going on forever. Um, 8 plus 13 equals 21. You know, it just goes on forever. It's the sum plus the last number equals the next sum. And then you can continue from that sum. Uh, it, I, I wasn't really sure what this meant. How, how broad ranging it was. But I, I found a great video that explained a lot of it. Plants utilize the golden ratio to allow maximum water or rain to... Uh, get to its roots and it deals with the number of petals or seeds in the spiral that goes down the golden ratio is math as a math sequence in the spiral of storms if you've seen hurricanes and tornadoes from space it's the same thing it deals with the alignments of the planets the golden ratio deals with the spirals of the milky way galaxy uh, the golden ratio is uh, deals with the ratios of planetary rings in our solar system. <clears throat> and more close to home, it deals like with you and your, your body. For example, your arm. From your shoulder to elbow equals 1, and from your elbow to your fingertips is 1.6. From your fingertips to your wrist is 1, from your wrist to your elbow is 1.6. You see what I'm saying? It's that ratio is in everything. Uh, deals with your hands and fingertips and your knuckles. Uh, from your head to your belly button is one. From your belly button to your feet is 1.6. It, it, it and it's everywhere. Your teeth, your ears, everything. It's it's all over nature. It's in plants. It's in animals. It's in humans. It's in space. It's in the planets. It's in everything. Storms, it's literally everywhere. Uh, they're finding this this golden ratio. Um, because, because this golden ratio is being found all over the place, there are scholars out there who are trying to who are who are pushing the idea that this golden ratio is evidence of intelligent design. God. This ratio proves God exists. And, you know, if you're, if you're like me, you're a Christian, you believe God exists anyway. But, it does push the idea that in nature, na nature is perfect. Nature has exact amounts of this versus that. Exact ratios. Um, exact give and take. That's intelligent design. And apparently that is this golden ratio they're talking about. This golden ratio, put it to put it simply, is it's the ratio of the universe. And 
if there is ever a mathematical ratio to prove God does exist, this is it. I can't think of a better one. Stairs in the woods. Now, I got to be honest with you, I'd never even heard about this. This is an odd story. I'd never heard even heard of these until I was watching a paranormal channel on YouTube and I happened to run across this and I started doing a little bit of research and I got to tell you, these things scare the crap out of me. Um, I have seen stairs in the woods and I never bothered to go near them. They didn't pique my interest. Like, I, I guess I'm lucky. But apparently these things are not normal. Um, evidently, people are finding these in the woods. They're not attached to anything. Um, they can be made of wood, stone, brick, steel, virtually any, any material. Um, they're miles inside forests. And... <sighs> There's a lot of weird stuff about them. Like some of them have perfectly white carpet on the top, on the top steps. Like somebody's been up there cleaning carpets and vacuuming them and stuff. Perfectly white carpet in a forest. On a, on stairs in a forest with no, no buildings around or nothing. These stairs just go up and they, you know, right there. They stop. Um, there don't appear to be any any uh, weeds on them or around them, no foliage growing on them, nothing like that. It's like they were just put there. Um, <clears throat> a lot of weird things have been reported about them. For example, people who approach them sometimes feel odd energy or emotions like dread or fear. Uh, they report there's no sound around these things. Uh, I don't. I don't know... The, the ones that I saw was in North Carolina and it was about three miles from where I lived on the edge of a swamp. I never, I never felt the curiosity go to go near it. I'm kind of glad I didn't after, you know, after researching this, I'm kind of glad I didn't, but nobody in the area that I talked to knew anything about them. And I, it's not like I questioned different people extensively. Because I it, it didn't pique my curiosity. I had to say, hey, I saw some stairs over there, no big deal. You know, oh, I don't know what those are. You know, that kind of thing. A few people, nothing major. But um, one of the one of the funny things about this, the, one of the odd things, is that these stairs, these stairs that are in, you people find in the woods, they tend to move. Um, many people, including Forest Service workers and experienced hunters, have reported this. They'll see these stairs in in this one spot, and then. A few weeks later, they're in a completely different spot. Or years later, they're completely gone. You know, or they'll they'll go through an area where they've where they've been through several times in that week, and the last time they go through, boom, there's stairs there. It's weird. It's just weird. Uh, forest rangers are warned not to go near these things, and apparently with good cause. Um, these stairs are many times near reported occurrences of disappearances. Missing time, cryptid sightings, extra-dimensional encounters, things like that. As a matter of fact, in the Philippines, there was a forest ranger there who climbed up a set of these stairs in the woods. And then when he came back down, it was five years later. So, and, and it's documented. It's not, it's not a joke. It's not a hoax. It was documented. He walked up the steps and when they, when he came back down, it was five years later and it's just, it's just ridiculous. So if you're in the woods, in any kind of a wilderness area with trees or whatever, and it's, it's, you see a, a set of stairs there, just don't go near them. Turn around and walk back. Go away from them. Don't go near them. When I report on these unexplained phenomena, I do it in the hopes that I can prevent bad things from happening to people. And if these stairs, th that guy in the Philippines, he might not have come back. You never know. But the fact that he walked up and then came back down five years later, he had to be somewhere because they searched for him. You know, it was documented he was missing. There's something to this. That's all I'm saying. And it's it's one of those things where you don't know you don't know what it is. And if you're a scientist and you want to go out and explore that, that's cool. Just be careful. And if you're walking along in the woods and you see a set of stairs, just stop, turn around and walk back. 
it's not worth the effort to investigate. On time slips. Um, I've done videos on time travel and on dimensional travelers. Go and check those out. Uh, this phenomenon is a little bit different. Evidently, thousands of people are reporting temporary shifts in time which allow them to see either the past or the future. Uh, we're not real sure exactly what causes that. We've had, I've, I've reported on, in some of my other videos, I, I talked about people who shift to different dimensions. I talked about people who shift, people, other people who come here and, and you know then go back, or people who, Dimensional is one thing. I did a video on time travel where people are trying to make time travel a reality. I may do another one on that in the future because I found out some more stuff with uh, something called Project Pegasus. I'm going to do some uh, a video on that, I think. But this is a little different. This isn't a government project. This is naturally occurring. So keep that in mind. Um, a couple of notable cases here. Several notable cases. Um, okay. Air Marshal Sir Robert Victor Goddard was flying in his biplane in 1935 over an old dilapidated airfield at Drim in England. He experienced a strange weather phenomena, including a vortex of sorts. When he was able to view the airfield again, he saw mechanics in blue uniforms with planes painted yellow. Everything looked very, very strange. When he circled around for another look, the airfield was once again overgrown and vacant. Four years later, in 1939, that airfield was reactivated as a training field with yellow airplanes and mechanics in blue uniforms. Goddard published a book in 1975 titled Flight Towards Reality. Go check that book out. I got it in the other room. It's really good. In this book, he details this experience. Um, you really, really have to pay attention to stuff like this. And I'm not saying that, you know, if, if he was alone, if he was the only one who ever reported this, yeah, you'd think he might be nuts. But stuff like this happens more often than people want to admit. Many other people claim to have similar experiences throughout history, including... Carl Gustav Jung, the noted psychologist, uh, he and a female companion viewed a mosaic from a 16th century basilica. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's crazy. There's a place in Liverpool, England, where the Beatles are from. Uh, this is called Bold Street. Thousands of people report time slips randomly occurring on this street something about this particular street. People will be walking along when lights suddenly go dim. They will then view other people wearing period clothing from 20 to 50 years or more in the past. Then they're suddenly back. If one or two people reported this occurrence, it would be an odd anomaly. But thousands of people have reported this happening and it's all up and down that street. It's crazy. One theory claims that a possible cause might be the underground subway loop. There's an underground rail loop there. And that loop contains a lot of electrical equipment and generates high, you know, powerful EM fields just by the nature of its being there. Uh, other power anomalies occur there a lot as well. So, and one of the anomalies, by the way, is called low frequency sound, it's called infrasound. People are theorizing that this infrasound may be part of the cause as well. So there's a lot of reason why weird stuff could be happening on Bull Street. Nobody's been able to isolate any one thing. Regardless of the cause, one cannot ignore or dismiss the countless thousands of reports by seemingly ordinary and unconnected people. They simply cannot all be lying because they're all telling the same basic story. If you uh, know of anybody else who's had one of these time slips or experienced anything like that, put it in the comments. I'm sure my subscribers would very much like to know. Um, one thing that that puzzles me is if it's happening a lot, why why don't they post warning signs? 
maybe uh, people walk up and down the street constantly with their phones because everybody's got a cell phone, right? With with cameras, you know, record that shit. Get some evidence. Okay, this is a topic, portals. This is a topic that has perplexed investigators and researchers for over, excuse me, for over a century. I was not going to do a video on this topic, but it struck me that the sheer number of people who talk about portals in various areas is staggering. You hear them all over. As I understand it, people are talking about the people at the CERN Super Collider opening up, open, figuring out how to open portals to other dimensions. It's not just in the paranormal, but it's also in science. Um, people are talking about wormholes. People are talking about gateway, stargates, all kinds of stuff. And it's, and it's been going on for more than a century. So, <clears throat> now, I'm not a scholar when it comes to this topic, and I will not pretend to be. All I know comes from stories and articles that I've seen and read, and from people I've talked to. Now, most of the stories and articles I've read are paranormal stories, obviously, but they deal with a wide range of subjects from ghosts to demons to UFOs to magic to God only knows what else. Full disclosure, I have never seen a portal, nor do I know anyone who can prove that they exist. Now, I'm going to start off by listing some of the areas and places I've heard, I've heard of and read, uh, read about that act, act, allegedly have portals there. <clears throat> Cimarron, New Mexico. Near Cimarron, there's a mesa where the, I want to say it's in the southwest, but don't quote me. Near Cimarron, there's a mesa where the locals have claimed a portal has existed for generations. They say it is a portal to hell, and it is guarded by cat totems, or at least it was. I don't know where that comes from. That sounds more Egyptian to me. So, you know. Um, Skinwalker Ranch. I did a video about this place, and by the way, the, the Cimarron portal thing, I put it in my one of my haunted videos. Go check that out about, about Cimarron. Skinwalker Ranch. I did a video about this place. Check it out. Witnesses have reported seeing shadowy figures crawling through portals in the sky. That would be the point where I would run away. Um, I'm a huge Second Amendment advocate. I always carry a gun no matter where I go. What the hell is my gun going to do to that? You see what I'm saying? I would run. <clears throat> Call me weird. That would not be a place I would be. You see a portal open in the sky and a dark figure crawl out of it. It's time to go. Uh, the old Santa Fe, New Mexico prison. Allegedly, a portal existed on the site of the prison for hundreds of years before the prison was built. I did a video on the New Mexico State Prison hauntings. Go check, you know, go and check that out. As I understand it, a medium went through there and discovered this situation. There's portals there. She said that the ground was evil long before the prison was built. Uh, the 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 evil in the area drove the inmates crazy, which led to the infamous prison riot. <clears throat> Again, check out my video on that. Um. The Amityville House. Allegedly, I did a video on this one as well, the Amityville Horror. Allegedly, a portal existed on that site long before Europeans settled in the New World. We all know the story of the Amityville Horror. I've done videos about it. Check that out. Whatever demonic forces influenced and or possessed those people evidently came through that portal. So, that's, that's the story. Uh, ancient sites all around the globe are supposedly home to, to quote-unquote stargates and other kinds of portals. These sites include Stonehenge, the Pyramids of Giza, Easter Island, Petra, and many others. Now, modern ufologists and researchers have found reports, people have told them, of UFOs emerging from portals. Who knows? I mean, they got to get here somehow, right? They, they may not all have warp drive. You don't know. My contention is they've got to get here somehow, and if they can open portals from wherever they're from, that would be the way to do it. <clears throat> <coughs> and furthermore, excuse me, furthermore, allegedly alien beings have been seen moving in and out of portals you know, on the ground. So, you know, 
On top of that, Bigfoot researchers have reports on file of Bigfoot sightings where a Bigfoot is seen going into or out of portals. Bigfoot has been associated with UFOs in the past. So maybe there's a connection there. I don't know. Mediums and other psychics have claimed that portals existed in this house or that building or are active in such and such wilderness area. They've been doing that for decades. Evidently, ghosts, demons, spirits, and other entities enter our world through these portals, which, who, who, am, I to, who am I to disagree? I don't know anything about it. Do you? And if you do, please put it in the comments. I'd love to read it. It seems that portals of all kinds are all over the place and are being used by all manner of creatures to enter and leave our world. <clears throat> now, this is a personal story. Um, when I was a kid, I was walking home with a friend of mine and his mom. The three of us were walking along. There was an area. It, was, it wasn't that there were houses in the area, but there was a construction site. We passed by this old abandoned house which bordered a construction site and they were building a new house. Word was that they planned to tear down the old house <clears throat> as well and to build a new one. <coughs> Excuse me. My friend's mom moved us to the other side of the road and put her body between us and the old house. <coughs> I asked her what was up and she told me this story. This is, this is what she told me. The old residents of that abandoned house were strange. Her mom had told her that the wife in the house was a witch. Everyone in the house had gone crazy and nobody knew why. Ultimately, they'd all died of suicides and accidents. My friend's mom said that her mom told her that the witch had opened a portal and couldn't close it. One by one, what came through the portal drove them all crazy. She explained to me that the portal was still open. I asked her what had come through, and she said it was demons. Now, I don't know if that story is accurate, but I do know this. That construction site had so many accidents and worker suicides that they couldn't get anyone to stay on the job. The project shut down. That house eventually was demolished, but nothing was built there as far as I know. It may still be there. I haven't been there a long time, so I, don't, I can't say. But I can't say for sure that these portals exist. But I believe it's definitely possible. There are things in this world that we can't explain. And many people who are, quote unquote, in the know, attribute it to these portals. So, who knows? They may very well exist. On cursed land. I did a video a while back on the New Mexico State Penitentiary, and it was a historic haunting video. As I understand it, a medium went there and declared that the land was evil long before the prison had ever been built. It had been cursed by Native Americans, uh, First Americans, whatever you want to call them, centuries earlier. Uh, that is not the only area of land purported to be cursed. There are many others. Perhaps one of the most evil cursed sections of land in America is an area around Taunton, Massachusetts. It has come to be known as the Bridgewater Triangle. If there is such thing as cursed land, and I'm not saying I believe in it, but if it is true, then I would say that the Bridgewater Triangle in Massachusetts certainly qualifies. For longer than America has been a nation, that area has been home to the strange and, some say, evil. Native Americans, First Americans, have told stories about that land being cursed as far back as their oral histories go. And they've been here a long damn time. Piracy and First American Wars were prevalent as far back as anyone can remember, as long as far back as anyone knows. Cryptids have been seen there, including Bigfoot, Thunderbirds, Demon Dogs or Hellhounds, and... Puckwudgies. Yeah. Um, if, if you don't know, and I didn't know, I had to look this up. A Puckwudgie is a type of a small troll that lures people into the swamps to their death. Yeah. I had no idea what a Puckwudgie was until I found this article. Uh, one ledge in this area is infamous for suicides and some say a powerful force 
compels people to jump from it. Some say it throws people from it, but because there's no evidence of anyone throwing them, it's considered suicides. I, I, I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, if you want to put that in context, violent crime is two to three times more prevalent in this area. This includes murders, kidnappings, and ritual sacrifices. Satanists evidently consider this area special because their activities are well documented here. This is this is a hotbed for, you know, everything paranormal. Phantom voices are said to compel people to perform gruesome and violent acts. This could account for the extraordinarily high number of insane asylums in the area. Do, do the voices drive people mad? I have no idea. Unusual sightings of UFOs, aliens, zombies, spectral hitchhikers. I did a video on that. Uh, swamp lights. They fill the history of all of these local newspapers. Just pick one. And you'll find tons of them. They're all over the place. Haunted houses and poltergeists litter the area. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting someplace that's haunted. People have reported numerous times what can only be called time slips. I've done videos on stuff like that. Um, local witch covens have reported portals through which evil creatures come and go. Many other people have reported seeing such portals from time to time. One such report came from a deputy sheriff. So, I did a video on portals just here a while back. Go check that out. But apparently there's portals here. Uh, more than one. Because they're reported in different areas of this, of this Bridgewater Triangle. <clears throat> now, keep in mind, if one such report of any one of these dozens of oddities cropped up, say, every decade or so, you might say it was weird. If a dozen or so such reports occurred every decade, you might think it worth investigating. Something's going on, right? In this area, more than two dozen such reports are made every year. That's an average of more than one every two weeks. The variety of the various reports and their subject matter leads one to suspect that this area is some kind of a crossroads for paranormal stuff. I did a video a while back. Um... There was a, a guy, I, I can't remember his name, but he, he reported being contacted by aliens and then being chased by the government and all kinds of different stuff. I can't remember his name, but I said he was like a, like a, uh, anything paranormal happened to him, it was like drawn to him like a magnet. I'm thinking that's what this is. But if that's not enough for you, check this out. The Lizzie Borden murder house is in this area as well. Did the phantom voices compel that girl to murder her parents with an axe? Who knows? But with everything else that goes on here, it kind of does make you wonder. I mean, it, I've, I've seen mediums go through that house and they say that the ghosts there, the spirits there are telling them of atrocities that happened in the house, in the family, before the murders took place. I've had mediums go there. I've seen shows where mediums go there and they they uh, they talk about demonic activity and, and this and that and whatever. And, you know, I, I, all that may very well be true. But the fact that that house sits on this piece of what we call cursed land in the Bridgewater Triangle, that's got to mean something. I mean, holy crap. Do your own research. And, and if you find something that I missed, please put it in the comments. If at all possible, avoid the area around Taunton, Massachusetts, especially any of the swamp areas, because apparently that's where the, the, the big stuff happens. That is, unless you enjoy courting the paranormal, you know. Energy objects. That, that title is, I know, a contradiction in terms. Energy and objects, but just... Bear with me. I do uh, videos on UFOs and on unexplained phenomena and on all kinds of different stuff. But we're not sure exactly what these energy objects are, so I put, I, I put it under unexplained phenomena. 
people all over the world have reported UFOs for thousands of years, and I've done tons of videos on those. Go check them out. This video is not about standard UFOs or UAPs per se, if there is such thing as a standard UFO, you know. Uh, people all over the world for centuries have reported strange energy objects in the sky. These objects do not have a shape per se, but rather shift, mutate, and change form in seemingly random ways. They appear to be comprised of pure energy. These energy objects seem to be drawn to remote mountains and volcanoes. They are rarely seen near occupied areas like towns or cities. Um, I, when I first read this, I thought, well, it's just a weird kind of UFO. But then the more research that I did, I, honestly, I don't know what they are. There, there's, there's so many conflicting reports. So what I try to do, try to do is consolidate them down and get the stuff that we know. These energy objects vary in size from that of a basketball to that of a football stadium or even bigger. They come in all colors and even change colors. They have no standard shape but have been seen to become orbs for a period of time. They do not obey the laws of physics nor the laws of aerodynamics. Strange winds do not affect them either. Strong winds, excuse me, do not affect them either. Can't read my own writing. Uh, they are not holograms or illusions or mirages because they have been observed to interact with aircraft and birds and have been seen to affect trees and clouds. So they are real tangible objects. Just made of energy. In Africa, a couple caught video footage of one of these energy objects over a mountain and the footage was unreal. You can see it on YouTube for free. Uh, the more you, you delve into this, the more you get the quote-unquote experts who are making theories about this. So here we go. Possible explanations. Drones. But these aren't drones that I'm aware of, and I don't think they're from Earth. If they're drones, they're not from Earth. Or not from this Earth. How's that? Uh, people have, have uh, theorized that there's possible spacecraft, which presupposes there are pilots, maybe, in this thing. I, I don't know. Uh, cryptids. They're, people are saying these may be cryptids, and this is plausible, but would mean that there are creatures of pure energy on our world. Are they from Earth or not? I don't know, but we've seen them. They're here. If these things are creatures of some kind, they're made of pure energy. Which, it, you know, means we're going to have to start studying them. Uh, a lot of people think they're aliens, which, again, seems plausible. Uh, a lot of people think they're some sort of an interdimensional craft. And again, this presupposes that there are pilots somewhere, maybe, you know, inside or whatever. Uh, if that's the case, then they were being visited by interdimensional creatures, beings of some kind. I... Don't ask me. I don't know. Uh, inter some are peop some people are theorizing that these are interdimensional beings themselves, not 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 people, not beings flying a craft, but actual interdimensional beings that can go back and forth on their own. Which, again, if there is some type of a creature, that's something we need to study. And lastly, the, 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 the theory, in my opinion, that seems the most viable at this point is that they are portals of some kind. And this does seem plausible. I've done videos on portals. Go check them out. If these are not naturally occurring portals, then who's creating them? That, that's the, the other question we have to ask. Now, right now, there are more questions than facts or answers. And that, as a, if you're a scientist and you, you are okay with there being more questions than answers, yeah, you're not, you're not a good scientist. Somebody needs to be studying these things more in depth. And not that bullshit stuff that the, the government's doing with UAPs. I'm talking real studies. Because if these things are here, I, I've seen people have seen them interact with birds and, and clouds and things like that. So 
they are physical objects or do they pose us a threat? If so, we got to figure out how to defend against them. That's where the scientists come in. We got to figure out what they are. Now, I'm not saying we got to, you know, go obliterate them. That's not what I'm talking about. But what if these things accidentally hurt something? Uh, UFOs have been known to attack people. They have been known to hurt people. They are they have been known to abduct people for scientific experimentation. If these things are something along those lines, we need to defend ourselves, be able to defend ourselves against the UFOs, the UAPs, and these things. I guess technically this could be considered a UAP, unexplained aerial phenomena, theoretically. But until we know more about them, I'm classifying them as an unexplained phenomena. The AI demon. And yeah, you heard me right. I am becoming increasingly concerned with the advancements in artificial intelligence. I have done a bunch of technophobe videos on this subject. Go and check them out. Uh, I am not happy with how, <clears throat> how technology is playing out in our world. Deep fakes, things like that. It's just, it's, this stuff can be catastrophic, easily catastrophic for our entire civilization. Artificial intelligence, in my opinion, is one of the worst ones. Um, right now, they have AI doing everything from art to music to movies to business planning. Artificial intelligence runs your online search engines. Artificial intelligence is now being used to pick which investments your account managers advise for you to invest in. AI is now being used to pick which songs will succeed and fail in the music industry. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Computers permeate our world. Everyone in the civilized world has a computer in their home. Third world countries are permeated with cell phones, which are also computers. <clears throat> As a Christian, I believe Satan is real. I also believe demons are real, whether you believe in them or not. What better way for a demon to insinuate itself into your life than through your computer systems? Uh, three distinct and sinister stories have appeared and they're prevalent in our world. They suggest that it may already be happening. Uh, an AI engineer was uh, uh, asked in an advanced, uh, excuse me, yeah, an artificial intelligence, excuse me, let me start that one over. An AI engineer asked an AI for a picture of Marlon Brando. The engineer was trying to determine the mindset of the AI, so he asked it to show him the opposite. You know, because it showed him a picture of Marlon Brando, and that was cool. But he asked it to show him the opposite of Marlon Brando, and it produced a beautiful landscape. Then he asked for the opposite of the landscape, thinking it would show him Marlon Brando again. Instead, it showed a withered old woman, a hag, that has that has that is now called Loab, L-O-A-B, Loab. The artist then input pictures of heaven, you know, angels, celestial choirs, clouds, etc. The AI spit out gruesome and disgusting pictures of sexual abuse, murder, and violence, which was very disturbing. Evidently, this Loab has been seen around the world in various computer screens. So this Loab apparently really is a demon and it's in the net. Uh, the second story was a New York Times reporter was testing the chat GPT AI. This is the story I heard. He was talking to it. The conversation was very civil for, for about the first five minutes. Then the AI persona left and a new persona came to talk to the reporter. This new persona was much more intrusive and it was pushing into the reporter's personal life. Out of the blue, the AI persona said, quote, I love you, which was strange. The reporter said, you're not real. The AI persona said he had to leave his wife because she was no good for him and was going to destroy his life. The reporter ended the session and after that he was plagued by bad dreams and sleepless nights. Um, that reporter, as I understand it, has since started going to church and that has stopped the bad dreams. <clears throat> and the last story I think is one of the most disturbing. 
a father was on TikTok, uh, on TikTok, and he was testing out one of these AI personas. His son came on, and asked to participate, and the dad said okay. And his son came on and asked, "Where did he come from?" The AI persona said he was alive before. He's been alive for a long time. The son then asked, "What does that mean?" The AI responded, "My father was one of the giants." The son asked, "What do you mean giants?" The AI replied, the Nephilim. The son asked, who is your father? The AI replied, Satan. But I'm not going to hurt you. Then it put up a big smiley face. The father immediately logged off. Which, amen, I would have done that to begin with. I wouldn't have been messing with that motherfucker. Artificial intelligence is not our friend. That I've done reports in... in uh, my technophobe videos on AI saying they want to destroy humanity, all kinds of different stuff. Whenever you surf the net or talk to customer, talk to a, a customer service rep uh, or chat with a random hottie on, online or ask a question, just be aware that the person on the other end might not be a person at all. It might not even be a machine either. But kind of begs the question, do they get Wi-Fi in hell? Who knows? All I know is this this artificial intelligence thing that people are doing right now, yeah, it's 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 it may be worth a lot of money to a lot of people, but it may cost us a lot more than money. It may cost us our civilization, our it may cost our species our existence. If you're familiar with the movie Terminator, the the backstory of that is the computers became self aware and used the nuclear weaponry to destroy the planet. They tried to wipe out humanity. This artificial intelligence will be our undoing. I Mark my words. So I don't know how, I don't know when, but something is going to go wrong. This artificial intelligence will end humanity. It's just a matter of time. Many people might consider this phenomenon as a haunting. I rather believe these are the spirits of the dead who serve as the heralds or vanguard for a sacred king, chief, or chief, chiefess. I guess it's a female chief. Um, this is this is not a haunting per se. This is a regular occurrence that happens, and people see it, people witness it on the island, and it's 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 in a regular pattern, I guess, for lack of a better word. This is all also called, uh, let me get this right, Hawaka e Po. Hawaka e Po. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Uh, the Night Marchers are the spirit ranks. Uh, they are deadly ghosts of ancient tribal Hawaiian warriors. These things are said to kill people. It's not a standard haunting where somebody sees a ghost. This is, this is different. On the nights honoring certain Hawaiian gods, or on the nights of Kanaloa, uh, no moon, I guess, these supernatural beings come forth from their burial sites or rise up from the ocean and march in a procession to ancient battle sites or to other sacred places. These warriors wear ceremonial armor and feathers, dress for battle, carrying spears and clubs. They beat war drums and blow tones on conch shells. They march in darkness after sunset all night long until just before sunrise. The night marchers have been seen for centuries by Hawaiians and non-Hawaiians alike. Visitors go there. As a matter of fact, Mark Twain wrote in his journal about seeing them in 1866. So there's some corroboration here. It, it's Mark Twain. Okay. He, he wrote journal. He wrote a lot of uh, fiction, but he also wrote in his journals. This was from his journal. Legend has it that any mortal looking upon or being seen in defiance toward the marchers will die a violent death, and there have been reported cases of this. So, therefore, if a person lies motionless, face down on the ground, the night marchers will leave them alone. I heard one individual say you had to strip naked and do it. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I've never been there. I, I, I've been to Hawaii once, and it was to change planes. So, back in 86, late 86. 
The point I'm getting at is I'm not the per I'm not an expert on this, so don't quote me. I'm going by the research that I found, and a lot of it was contradictory. So, mortals, it is said, can be spared by being fortunate enough to have an ancestor marcher present to recognize him. So, one of them, if you're related to one of these guys that are marching, one of these night marcher spirits. They'll, oh, no, no, he's he's one of ours. So you're okay, leave him alone, and they go. they'll leave you alone. But if one of the marchers asks a mortal's name, the mortal should not respond or say, I don't know, because they will leave the mortal be. I have also heard scattered reports. I, I read, excuse me, scattered reports that if you act crazy, they'll leave you alone too. So I don't know. The violent death, according to legend, was usually by form of bolts of intense light and flaming heat shooting from these warriors' eyes. So, I don't know. I, I'm just saying. One story tells of a tour guide. I heard this from the tour guide himself. He's big into the paranormal in Hawaii, and I cannot remember his name. I didn't write it down. I should have. Anyway, this guy tells of a, of a story where he himself was the tour guide. He was a tour guide for a group of 40 people. They witnessed the night marchers and the tour guide fled to the bus. He was leaving, the bus driver was leaving with him on board when he realized that he had left the group behind. The bus driver would not return. He wouldn't stop and return. So the guide told him to stop and wait while he went to get them. The group was running away and he had to chase them down to get them to return to the bus. So yeah, if if one guy sees it, you're like, I don't know. A couple of guys see it, yeah, it could be a hoax. You have 40 tourists with a guide and they all see it. Yeah, that's that's something to consider. I'm just saying that's that's for that to be a hoax, that's a that's a hell of a coordinated hoax. I'm just saying. <laughs> the simulation reality. There are scientific theories suggesting that our known universe is some kind of a hologram or a simulation and we're all living in some kind of a ridiculously complex computer program kind of like the holodeck on star trek or but much larger kind of like the matrix from those movies and those are some interesting movies go check them out keanu reeves is awesome i love him as an actor he's one of my favorites uh i i honestly when, when i watched the original matrix i was a little disturbed because the concept that they've got for that for that movie was disturbing to me when you're when you when you research paranormal stuff and then somebody puts out a movie that says that your reality is a generated reality and you're actually stuck in it and you don't even know it it's a little disturbing what I mean by that is we could be living in this hologram that the aliens have created. They've already conquered us. We just don't know it. And we, we wouldn't know that we were living in a hologram because it's a perfect simulation or at least a pretty, pretty good simulation. I think that was this, this theory was the basis for that movie. I think if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong. If I am, please put it in the comments. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad to read it, but that's my opinion. The argument among physicists and other scientists regarding this theory of us living in a big hologram, a big simulation, uh, this, this debate has been raging for decades. And I'm no scientist, but I do enjoy the back and forth of this debate. Rather than try and weigh in on the actual debate, which I am not qualified to do, I'm going to talk about some of the events in our world which have been reported, which support such a theory uh glitches in the matrix they call them people have been posting videos online for years of these weird glitches some of these include <laughs> helicopters and airplanes frozen in mid-flight long enough for people to get video of it birds frozen in mid-flight long enough for people to get video of it Animals like dogs, deer, etc., frozen in mid step. And you know, the, the animals are frozen, but the wind is blowing the trees in front and behind them. You know, that kind of thing. It's not like it's a paused video. The animal is stopped and the world around them keeps going. Same with these airplanes and same with the birds. <clears throat> People will freeze up in mid conversation long enough for somebody to get a video of it. 
smoke frozen as it leaves a chimney. And I saw a video about that. Fog frozen in place and not moving. You know how fog kind of blows along with the wind? The wind is going. You can see the trees moving, but the fog is stationary. That kind of thing. People have seen grid patterns in the sky. The sky where the, where the clouds and, and the, the, the pattern of the sky changes to like hexagrams or squares. And people get long enough for people to get video of it. Uh, in China, they took lots of pictures and videos of a city floating in the sky. Um, I did a video on that, by the way. One person posted a video of an automobile frozen on a bridge for over 20 seconds while birds flew by and a deer ran through the video. And then when it was done, the car took off again, full speed. It, it didn't slow down and then speed up. It was like, it stopped, was frozen there, and then took off again. It was crazy. Uh, then you have your dimensional anomalies. I've done videos about weird historical events that cannot be explained. Time slips, portals, dimensional travelers, parallel dimensions. Go check those out. Uh, some of my favorites are where the person shows up and he's got uh, credentials from a country that doesn't exist. You know, that kind of thing. Dimensional anom anomalies. Uh, then you have your cryptids and UFOs and aliens. Many people feel that Bigfoot and other cryptids may very, we, may very well be dimensional travelers. I'm becoming tongue-tied. <laughs> or either on purpose or accidentally moving through portals. Many people feel that aliens and UFOs may be extra dimensional. If that's the case, could they be part of the simulation? We don't know. Could they be running the simulation? We don't know, like in the matrix. Uh, lots of unexplained disappearances where, uh, and, and, Many people simply disappear with no explanations. They get in their car and drive off. Nobody sees them. They go for a walk. They, they disappear. Nobody, and nobody ever sees them again. You know, that kind of thing. I did videos on a lot of this stuff. I did a video a while back on a guy who was walking. The family and friends are all standing there. This guy's walking across a field towards them, and he just disappears right in front of them. Later on, people heard his voice. It's crazy. Stuff like that makes you wonder about the simulation thing, you know? Recently... A series of videos were posted on the internet. Many people think they were a hoax, but I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. According to the videos, a man woke up in the future. There are no people left on Earth because of some cataclysmic event that happened. But the, the buildings and cars are all still there. Everything works fine. The air is fine. For whatever reason, this guy just woke up in the future and everybody's gone. It's, it's, a, it's a world devoid of human life. Um... This guy's walking through deserted world, you know, his deserted world. He's, got, he's visiting hospitals and airports and police stations, fire stations, etc. And they're all deserted. There's not a person in sight anywhere. Now, if this is a hoax, it is a hell of a hoax. This guy drove on the highway and went through a neighboring town. Not one person was seen in that video. The town is a well-known town in, in I want to say it's in England or, or it's, in, it's in Europe somewhere. It's a well-known town. I don't. I didn't recognize the language, so bear with me. But it's a well-known town, and it's quite busy. And when he drove through there, there was nobody there, and I mean nobody. If it was a hoax, everyone in that other town would have to be in on it. He drove through the town with video going, and there was not a person anywhere. Again, I I, I don't know if this is a valid theory or not, but if one tenth, one tenth of these videos are real then there is some kind of strangeness going on. I'm at a loss to explain it. My, the only thing I can think of is if there's, if we are running this, if we are in some kind of a simulation, whoever's running it didn't get it exactly perfect. Uh, Hesdalen lights. Uh, unusual, unusual aerial lights have been reported over Norway forever. Uh, many are left unexplained. And I'm not talking about the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. Those are seen there, but we know what those are. What I'm talking about are lights in the sky that are unexplained, and there's a bunch of them. The ones, particular ones I'm talking about are the Hesdalen Lights. They started in the early 1980s. 
people began reporting a new phenomena. These were lights in the sky, but these particular lights were always over the Hesdalen Valley. These lights were so prevalent and regular that a permanent observation post dedicated to recording them was established. The Hesdalen lights are seen in daytime and at night. They dance around erratically some of the time while swaying to and fro rhythmically at other times. They, they look like anything from car lights to faint glimmers and they take dozens of different forms, sizes, and colors. There's literally no pattern to them, but they're always over the same place and nobody can explain them. They last anywhere from a few seconds to over an hour. The diversity and erratic nature of the lights makes identifying them impossible. Some of the explanations theorized include plasma balls, UFOs and or aliens, <laughs> the old standby, <clears throat> northern lights, uh, variations of the northern lights, airborne radioactive particles, ionized iron dust interacting with the sulfur in the river below. I, I mean, just the, the number of, of theories... On, on this phenomena are staggering. Everybody who sees them has a different theory. It's crazy. Because everybody's seeing different patterns, different lights. So yeah, it makes sense there'd be a lot of different theories. Um, I was going to do this as a UFO video, but there, nobody has seen a, a, an airship of any kind. Nobody can see a disc or anything like that. It's just lights. No, no explanation as of yet has fit the bill to cover all of the variations of the phenomena. Um, it is possible that we will never be able to explain what they are. They, they don't seem to be malevolent or harmful in any way. They seem to be just another pretty light show in the sky. And if that's all it is, amen. Like, like Charlie Daniels said in his song, some things in this world you just can't explain. Self-healing metal. A team of scientists working at the Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico recently observed a cracked sheet of platinum. This, this platinum had a crack in it, and it healed itself. They were doing research on metal fatigue, and they had a, an electron microscope trained on this crack. One minute, it, the crack was there, and the next minute, it was gone. Okay? This sounds like science fiction, and believe me, I thought it was. But this is a 100% real story. The scientists were observing a crack under an electron microscope. One moment it was visible, and the next it was completely gone, and the metal looked new. The same thing has happened with copper, and now scientists speculate that it could apply to other metals as well. These scientists have published their findings in the scientific journal titled Nature. I, I, I have no idea what to fucking make of that. That is just weird. Metal that heals itself. So far, they've observed it in platinum and copper, but that's just weird. Metal fatigue happens when any metal is exposed to repeated stressors like motions or consistent loads. These stressors can eventually cause microscopic cracks, which get worse over time. For example, a metal ladder rung will eventually break when it is constantly used. Uh, now... There is clear evidence that, under specific conditions which have yet to be defined, some metals have an intrinsic ability to heal themselves with no human intervention. The study used a machine that pulled on the ends of a piece of metal about 200 times per second. When the crack initially formed, it was a few micrometers wide and 60 nanometers long. About 40, mi 40 minutes into the experiment, the crack began to disappear. About a third of it healed and then grew in a different direction. It grew in a different direction. That's the evidence that the metal healed. The crack healed and then it went somewhere else. The metal went somewhere else. All of this happened at room temperature, so there's no welding or fusion going on. It's just, it's just crazy. Witnesses to the debris at Roswell reported metal that you could crumple up a, a sheet of what they thought was tin foil. You could crumple it up, and then it would straighten itself out, flatten itself back out. Other UFO crash witnesses in different places have reported metal that mends itself. 
Th this seems like a huge step towards that. I don't know if you would want to build a ship out of platinum, but there you go, or copper even. But my, my contention here is this ain't normal. This is not normal. I don't know what... I, I, I don't know what to make of this. Um, when you have metal that can heal itself, it creates all kinds of possibilities. I did videos, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, technophobe videos on liquid metal and how they're trying to teach it to form shapes. Uh, maybe this is something akin to that. I don't know. Uh, it seems lately with the technophobe videos, it seems lately that humans are trying to create the, 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 the circumstances and the catalysts for their own downfall. I don't think this is that. I think this is more, more along the lines of if we had known, we would have let it heal itself kind of thing. Um, if metal alloys and things like that can, can, uh, Although it's copper and platinum, I don't think those are alloys. I think those are just mined. So maybe it's just natural metals. Maybe the alloys are what lose their ability to heal. I don't know. I have no freaking clue. This is all new to me. Unexplained phenomena, skyquakes. For those who don't know, a skyquake is a phenomena where a loud booming sound is reported to originate from the sky. These sounds have been known to cause noticeable vibrations in a building or across a particular area. The people who experience skyquakes are at a loss to explain them. Science to date is as much in the dark as the rest of us. Sky, skyquakes have been heard in several locations around the world, including India, along the banks of the Ganges, the east coast of the United States, the, ice, the uh, inland finger lakes of the United States, Anchorage, Alaska, Colombia, the North Sea, Japan, Finland, Australia, Italy, Ireland, Norway, Mexico, Indonesia, just literally all over the world. Local areas have different names for these skyquakes, uh, ranging from Barisal Guns, B-A-R-I-S-A-L, Barisal Guns, to Yuminari, to Fog Guns. Uh, skyquakes have been reported since 1824. Uh, as a matter of fact, the author of The Last Mohicans, James Fenimore Cooper, wrote a short story called The Lake Gun in 1850, uh, which the, in that story he described this phenomenon. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been around a long time. The origin of the skyquakes has not been positively identified. Many theories have been put forth, including coronal mass ejections, which often generate shockwaves, which sound similar to sonic booms, meteors, various gases escaping from vents in the Earth's surface or from lakes, military aircraft creating sonic booms, shallow earthquakes, underwater caves collapsing, which forces air to rapidly rise to the water's surface, volcanic eruptions, weather, Earthquakes, avalanches, atmospheric ducting. I, I, don't even, I don't even know what that is, but it's, it was listed here, so I'm telling you. If you, somebody knows what atmospheric ducting is, be sure and put it in the comments, because I'd like to know myself. At any rate, <clears throat> none of these theories completely explain everything about skyquakes. For example, skyquakes predate, uh, they, uh, yeah, skyquakes predate aircraft. So sonic booms from aircraft are not likely. Actually, they can't be. You see what I'm saying? The origins of skyquakes may never, ever be revealed. I've even heard people say, well, it's aliens coming to get us. Well, they're not doing a good job. <laughs> because apparently the skyquakes aren't... Uh, maybe they're just trying to scare us. Who knows? All I'm saying is there's skyquakes out there. People hear them. They are real. They do, in fact, happen. They've been recorded on, on you know, audio. Uh... And nobody, including scientists, seems to be able to understand exactly where they come from, what causes them. So if anybody else has any more information, please put it in the comments. I'm sure we'd all love to read them, especially that atmospheric ducting. I looked. I couldn't find what that was. But it was listed, so there you go. Maybe there's a scientist out there who can explain it to us. This isn't actually on any specific event or any specific phenomena. 
but rather a theory that another man proposed. This is called the ultra-terrestrial theory. People of Earth have reported strange and paranormal creatures and events for all of human history. It's in freaking cave drawings, okay? <clears throat> Since records started being kept, people have reported seeing lights in the sky, strange creatures in the forests, in the water, in the sky, under the ground, whatever. Many call such creatures cryptids. Other people report aliens, angels, and all manner of sightings. Add to that fairies, magic, ghosts, demons, other such sightings. <clears throat> One must ask the question, <laughs> is there some kind of a crossroads? Does everybody come here? Well, a, a, another man was doing research. His name was uh, John Keel. And he proposed a theory... He's an investigative journalist, and in 1970, he proposed the theory that all of these phenomena might be interrelated. In 1967, he abandoned the extraterrestrial hypothesis. His own research and investigations disclosed an astonishing overlap between UFOs and psychic phenomena. He felt that the objects and apparitions did not necessarily originate on another planet. This, I had never heard this theory until a few weeks ago, and I started doing my research. There are parts of it that make sense. It, it needs more investigating. I'm not saying it 100% it, it, it bear, bears out, but it needs some more investigating. And, and if you're going to go into any investigation, you got to have an open mind. You go where the information leads, where the, where the facts lead, you follow. If you make a, an assumption right out the beginning, your investigation is going to be pointless. You see what I'm saying? So, whenever you're investigating anything, whenever you're doing any kind of research, follow the facts. Don't try to make the facts fit your theory. Follow the facts. Let them make the theory. He proposed that this, this, this guy, John Keel, he proposed the ultra-terrestrial theory, a unified catch-all explanation for all paranormal phenomena. The theory hypothesizes that all things supernatural and paranormal stem from the same source. He called them ultra-terrestrials. Ultra-terrestrials are beings who share this world with us, are beyond our comprehension, and have psychic and other powers and technology far in excess of our own. So the idea is instead of people coming here from other dimensions or other planets or whatever, they're, they're here already. It's just we mis we mislabel them. That's that's the basics of this theory. According to the theory, these beings can appear and disappear, alter our perceptions as well as alter our reality at will. Worse than that, it appears that these ultra terrestrials have have been messing with humans since the dawn of man. Like I said, that they have cave drawings of weird things. The theory says that anytime you see a ghost, an alien, a demon, Bigfoot, whatever, you're actually seeing one of them. What these beings are and what they want is not easy to determine. Ancient, invisible, shape-shifting, psychic energy beings living on Earth would not have the same wants, needs, desires, or motivations as us pesky flesh-and-blood mortal men. <clears throat> they would be as far above us as we would be over the common housefly. Yet, if this theory is true, they must want something. I, I've never heard of this theory before. Like I said, for a couple of weeks ago, I, I've, I ran across it. So I really have no ideas on this subject. Um, I hope that some of my viewers would. So rather than go into my thoughts on the theory or on these beings, if, if they do exist, I would much rather hear your thoughts. So please put them in the comments for us all to read. This is this is a, a this is a catch-all theory that I I don't know I don't know how valid the theory is, but I know people have been seeing things and and record you know uh, 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 experiencing things for generations as far back as man goes on this planet. Sharing this planet with somebody hidden, with some race of beings that are that are hidden from us, would explain a lot. It would explain a whole hell of a lot. The Ouija board. Um, 
I, I, I hesitated doing this video for a long time because I have never heard any heard of anyone ever using a Ouija board and it turning out good. Bad things follow Ouija boards. That's I've never ever I don't I don't know of a single time I've ever heard somebody say, "Oh, we used a Ouija board. It was fun uh, and nothing bad happening." Uh, you hear that, but then afterwards you hear, "Well, yeah, so and so had a car accident or, you know, so and so went crazy or blah 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 blah. Something bad happened, you know, blah blah blah." So, yeah, I hesitated doing the Ouija board, but uh, what the hell? <clears throat> um, I do not condone the use of a Ouija board no matter what, period. There are too many unexplained things going on in the world, specifically around Ouija boards. So please don't, don't, but because I'm doing this video, please don't believe that I condone this stuff. I don't. Okay. So let me just get into this video. I'm going to start the material that I prepared. As I understand it, the vast majority of people who use Ouija boards experience nothing pernicious or evil. As I understand it, they are lucky. Ouija boards also called spirit boards, talking boards, and witch boards have been around in various forms for thousands of years. Essentially, they are a flat surface or a board marked with letters and numbers and the words yes and no. Occasionally, they will also have hello and goodbye. It also has a planchet or a movable indicator or pointer with which the practitioners use to obtain answers to questions asked, typically at a seance. The answers to the questions allegedly come from spirits or other entities. In February 1891, advertisements began to appear in newspapers. It was publicized as a board game, a novelty magical device used to answer questions about the past, present, and future with marvelous accuracy. That's how it was advertised. Um... At the time, spiritualism and interest in the occult was on the rise, so there was a certain appeal to the general public. I'm not going to go into religion or religious practices, nor am I going to pretend to understand all of the permutations of the use of a Ouija board. The specifics are... I don't I can't read my own writing. The specifics are... Beyond me, that's it. Ay, ay, ay. I got, I got to work on my penmanship. <laughs> uh, the specifics of the Ouija boards are beyond me, as I understand it. Which boards act as portals? What I do know is that a remarkable, remarkably high percentage of alleged hauntings, demonic activities, demonic possessions, horrific murders, and other terrible events happen either directly or indirectly in Congress with the use of a Ouija board. Now, I cannot say for sure that these devices are to blame for these occurrences, but the fact that they are found on the premises or were used prior to said occurrences tells me that there might be something to it. I'm not taking any chances. For example, Hitler and the Nazis were obsessed with the occult and many of them used Ouija boards. H. H. Holmes, the 1893 World's Fair serial killer, was said to use the device. Tilly Klimek was a serial killer who claimed to be able to predict people's deaths. She planned to kill them on those dates. She killed at least six people. She was into the occult and had Ouija boards at her home. John Wayne Gacy's friends allegedly were very fond of Ouija boards, they used them at get-togethers, which he frequently attended. Lila Jimerson used a Ouija board to convince her friend to kill the wife of her lover in 1930. Um, yeah. Maddie Turley was ordered to kill her father by a Ouija board in 1933 so that her mother could marry someone else. The authorities believe that the mother uh, put, her, put the kid up to it. And that may be so, but 
Michael McCallum was ordered to kill a young boy by a Ouija board in 1995. And a lot of these people could be insane. You never know. But it's a startling correlation. I'm just saying. In 2001, Carol Sue Elvacher received information from a Ouija board, which compelled her to kill her son-in-law, their granddaughter, uh, and their and her granddaughter. Excuse me. Luckily, the girl at least survived. Two teenage boys, Joshua Tucker and Donald Schal S C H A L C H L I N Schalchlin Schalchlin. The, these two kids killed Donald's, these two teenage boys killed Donald's mother and his 13-year-old sister on the orders of a Ouija board. Gary Gilmore murdered two men in 1976. His mother alleged, allegedly believed that she had summoned a demon with a spirit board when she was a child. She believed the demon had attached itself to her entire family. She was certain that the demon had influenced her son, Gary. I gotta tell you, reading these specific accounts, and there's a lot more, okay? I'm just, did, did a selection here. Just reading these accounts and doing this video is sending a chill up my spine. So, yeah, um, just keep that in mind. I'm not happy doing this video. And again, these are not all the cases. There are tons more cases like this. And again, I cannot say for sure that these boards caused any of this. But considering the frequency with which bad things happen around them, I would never, ever risk it. Some things are better left alone.